welcome hoshamdeed and hosh galdenes today i have planned the session for the fellows who are uh, aspiring for a phd i have planned this in response of so many queries and questions regarding the admissions in phd programs so uh, this topic is just uh, dedicated to those who are aspiring for their phd let's start our discussion my today's topic is how to prepare for phd admission test and cat subject the contents we are going to discuss today are why to go for a phd this is very important to be addressed because most of the fellows they have no idea of what they are going to do with the phd or or what is the significance of phd or what is the what is the sole purpose behind uh going for a phd degree so we need to address this question first why to go for a phd what is the nature of phd admission tests and then we will have some discussion on cat subjects uh cat subject for phd how to get good scores in gat subject and in phd admission tests how to prepare for phd admission interviews so these are four or five things we are going to uh, discuss in our today's discussion the first thing is that ask yourself a question why to go for a phd obviously earning a phd degree is the dream of every competent student and you have all the rights to decide that and to do that in order to to improve your uh, skills your research skills definitely you have all the rights to decide that for you for uh, your future but you need to clarify yourself first about the pro and cons of uh, every field including Uh, this but there are a few things that you should keep in view ask yourself these questions of why what and how what why and how these questions include why am i supposed to go for a phd you need to ask this to yourself that why do i need a phd do i want to become a scholar in my field do i want to serve my field with research exposure do i want to get research expertise in my field do i want to contribute in enhancing the research perspectives of my field you need to seek the answers of these questions within uh the domains of your subject within the domains of your profession after getting clarity uh, from all those things ask yourself a few more things do i consider it necessary for earning a good job or some professional competency then there is a big no the answer is generally no because phd has a nature of probing deep into the phenomenon you are going to explore obviously phd will enhance your uh, exposure in within the field of your research it will make you proficient in that field in the research of that field but it won't serve your profession if you are a teacher then phd may help you to become a good researcher or it enables you or it will enable you to become a good supervisor in future for supervising different researches but it won't uh, teach you the methods of teaching it won't give you any such thing the methods of teaching yeah the methods of research the domains of research they it will open the doors of research and different domains of research different horizons of research you can explore uh, 
uh, in your PhD, different uh, horizons of research. But of course, it 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 isn't any sort of uh, professional degree. So uh, if you want to earn the professional competency, then you have to work in your field. Uh, and you ha and you need to get different sort of exposures within your professional life, but PhD is not the answer of this question. The next thing is that how much the degree will help me to polish myself within my professional expertise? Then partially no. PhD has a different nature, as I have already told you, because it will enhance your research exposure. It will uh, enable you to target your research goal. Uh, it will open new doors of researches within one field. But when we talk about the professional expertise, if you want to become a good researcher, if you want to become a research scholar, if you want to become a research supervisor, Yes, it will help you a lot. But uh, again, uh, there is nothing professional expertise. You can't get any sort of teaching professional expertise from the PhD, from this degree of PhD, from the doctoral degree. Then ask yourself, what is my goal associated with the degree of PhD? This question is a must to answer. After getting the answers, the answers will help you to sharpen your lens of understanding about the nature of a PhD degree. And then you can decide better for yourself that either you need it or not. Let's come to our actual topic. That is about the nature of a PhD admission test. PhD admission tests are often based on the test of certain abilities. And these abilities include your bent towards research, your insight in the major theoretical or scientific research paradigms of your own field, your own particular subject or, or your own particular field your grip over the major subjects of your field because um, most of the times in the written test you uh, have to uh, answer uh, the kind of questions that are not only associated to the theoretical paradigms of uh, your subject but also the previous knowledge uh, on the subject so and it, it also is a test of uh, your grip over the major subjects of your field uh, and then research methods and theories of your field you need to have a strong command over the research methods and the theories of your field particularly uh, the theoretical frameworks or the theoretical paradigms of your field uh, are actually addressed are actually inquired in this type of tests In Pakistan, we normally uh, have two types of uh, such tests uh, which are uh, necessary for seeking admission in MPhil and PhD degrees, GAT general for MPhil and GAT subject for PhD. Um, my today's focus is on GAT subject that is compulsory for PhD in any subject. Okay, get our graduate assessment test. Uh, get subject is a test that is meant to assess your competency in your subject. It is a hundred marks test based on some sections. Uh, normally it is divided in two sections. One is based on 70% of uh, your own subject means 70 uh, marks for your own subject and uh, then 30 percent is based on a general section and uh, this 30 percent 30 marks of general section uh, it further includes uh, some things some some categories 
the things uh, that you have to go through with or you have to answer in the second section that is known as general section of cat subject general section is divided in verbal in verbal you have to answer they are they are aimed to check the basic english proficiency of a student and uh, this verbal section includes synonyms antonyms reading comprehensions verbal analogies and uh, grammar and tenses based questions so these are the part of the general section uh, that is consisted of 30 marks now the question arises that how to get good scores in GAT subject or in PhD admission tests. Uh, for getting good scores, you need to keep in view certain things. You need to keep in mind that you need to secure minimum 60% of marks in order to pass that test. This is the passing ratio of the text. But a considerable aggregate is required for taking up with the merit requirements. Passing the test with 60% marks isn't sufficient. You need to score more in order to take up with the requirements of the merit. Uh, in the merit, I mean, I mean to say that in order to uh, come up with the merit criteria of PhD admissions, you need to secure uh, more than 60% or at least more than 70%. Uh, normally, the university-based admission tests of PhD, they consider 70% as a passing ratio. And in this type of paper, you have to secure at least 80 to 85% marks in order to fulfill them merit criteria or the requirements of merit criteria okay now when we are discussing the topic that how to secure uh, good grades or how to get a considerable score a healthy score in uh, phd admission test and in cat subject then there are certain things that that will help you to uh, become or to get good marks there are many online platforms available for the preparation of the PhD GAT subject. They offer practice tests. And then there is another thing. You can prepare from SAT 1 for verbal and analytical sections. Uh, however, the helping books for preparing uh, for the preparation of GAT subjects particularly, they are available in market as well. But there are a lot of online forums you can use to prepare for uh, your GAT subject. The actual thing is that you have to uh, make a strong, uh, or rather it is better to say that you should have a strong command over all the basic or, or major subjects of your uh, domain. Only this will help you to pass the test and to pass the interview as well. You need to manage your time uh, during the test. You need to manage your time as you are going to attempt a 100 marks MCQ type paper in just two hours. So you need to manage your time wisely. Now, normally in GAT subject and in GAT general, we are offered with uh, a copy of questions and then we are given a sheet that is known as bubble sheet and that is used for computerized uh, checking. So in those computerized bubble sheets, uh, you have no chance for making any kind of mistake because it will cause the drastic results for the students. Uh, the computerized bubble sheets don't allow you to make mistakes. No rewriting or cutting or double filling is considered so fill the slots thoughtfully means wisely and properly and better to revise your graduate specialized subjects thoroughly means the history the genres and different major subjects of your domain uh, you need to revise all that for passing this cat subject because sometimes uh, 
it turns out to be very, very technical for the students. There is a hack that you need to focus on. Are you, if you want to pass this GAT subject, you need to focus on uh, certain things that are the important dates that are the part of your course. The personas means the writers, authors of your uh, books, different books of different subjects uh, within your domain and then different ideologies within your domain, different theoretical frameworks of your domain, different works, the important and celebrated works of your domain and the events of your domain. They are very important, their dates are very important, their names are very important and particularly their crux is very important uh, to have a strong, you need to have a strong grip on uh, those things in order to answer those MCQs questions. Now the question arises that am I going to uh, revise the whole syllabus of my BS program or of my MPhil or masters then the answer is no you need to keep in view uh, that the celebrated authors the celebrated works only they should be kept in consideration and they should be revised thoroughly because uh, dynamic and celebrated works and authors of your field they are normally uh, used and their works are used for uh, preparing a question paper of a cat subject and uh, uh, this type of uh, profession based tests and lectures test and APs test so this type of things should be kept in view the dates persona ideology works events and dynamic and celebrated works and authors of your fields they are needed to be revised thoroughly in order to attempt that very paper uh, with significant grades for getting a considerable aggregate. The next thing is how to prepare for the PhD admission interviews. After passing the PhD admission test, either you have passed the CAT subject or you have just passed the university based PhD admission test, then uh, you will receive a call call for interview and what should be kept in mind during those interviews there are a few things phd admission interviews demand a camp comprehensive grip over uh, your area of interest area of interest means that what is your area of expertise in which you have a significant knowledge to answer the questions regarding that area so uh, in a PhD admission interview, it demands a comprehensive grip over your area of interest within your subject. Um, normally, the panelists, the interview panel members of uh, uh, the PhD interview, they are eager to know about your research plan as a PhD aspirant. So better to work on your research proposal or at least a roadmap of your PhD research in advance so that you may able to answer their question or you may able to inspire them uh, that, uh, that you are a very uh, deserving candidate for, uh, for securing admission. Then a few more things that, that should be kept in mind in those interviews. Be enthusiastic for your research plan, but do not behave like an over smart fellow. Inspire them mean the, means the panelists, the interview panelists, inspire them with your zest for contribution in the research domains of your field. But do not uh, try to uh, consider yourself that I am the best. Do not behave like an overconfident or with blind confidence. So this will uh, ruin your reputation as a competent uh, or deserving students for a student for the admission and PhD programs. So inspire them with your zest for contribution in the research domains of your field, but do not uh, be 
behave like an over smart fellow. Try to follow the footprints of some legends of the research in your field. This will inspire them. Have a solid grip on the research theories of your field. This is a very significant point because uh, if you are lacking somewhere in your uh, roadmap or in your proposal, then you should at least have a strong grip on the uh, theoretical perspectives uh, you can use in your research. So those theoretical domains uh, should be uh, should have a you should have a strong grip over those theories and those theoretical domains of research those theoretical possibilities of the research and different uh, figures uh, and different th theorists and different scientists uh, who have just worked on these theories you need to have a strong grip over this type of knowledge if you want to uh, win this war of uh, <laughs> competition uh, i hope these points will help you uh, to not only to pass your GATT subject and your uh, PhD admission test, but uh, it will also help you to uh, get some uh, points, uh, can some considerable points for uh, keeping in view during your PhD interviews. Thank you so much for today. See you uh, in the next video with some new topic. Allah Hafiz.